I mean, I think the whole idea of getting a lot of people to like use chat GTP and all of this stuff is to lead us down this path that Kissinger and Schmidt, among others, uh, sort of are charting out for humanity. Like if you develop a skill um, and then don't do it for 10 or 15 years, for example, you kind of forget how to do it. Right. So there's this whole idea of if you don't use it, you lose it. So if people are depending on AI to tell them where to turn when they're driving their car and, you know, no one use, uses like actual maps anymore. I mean, I understand that it's convenient, right? And I'm not saying like, oh, we need mm. to go back to the 90s, but, right? But it becomes after a while a slippery slope where people are just having the computer tell them everything to do every step of their lives ends up becoming micromanaged to an extent. Um, and the idea is that AI, through all the data that it absorbs about us, knows so much about us. Some of these people say it knows us better than we even know ourselves. Um, you know, there's that allows for an unprecedented degree of manipulation. And the problem is, is that the people uh, producing and programming AI and ultimately controlling AI and what it can do do not have our best interests at heart. And it is not a good idea to basically hand them our brains in a bag. The dawn of AI is no longer a distant future. It's our present reality. Recent insights from the World Economic Forum underscore this shift, emphasizing the need for acquiring new skills to adapt and flourish in this era. Furthermore, a comprehensive study by the IMF suggests that AI could potentially impact up to 60% of jobs in advanced economies. This significant statistic underscores the dual nature of AI serving as both a catalyst for innovation and a harbinger of potential job displacement and socioeconomic changes. Whitney Webb's insightful perspective sheds light on how AI is reshaping our skill sets and autonomy. Her observations are particularly relevant as we navigate a world increasingly driven by AI, from simplifying mundane tasks to making intricate decisions. Don't forget our partners at Jamie Tree Finance have launched a daily five-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 5,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Who owns AI, right? Uh, it's pretty much Silicon Valley company. So like even OpenAI, Sam Altman's thing, uh, that's essentially like owned by Microsoft, right? And so you mm -hmm. have what Microsoft, Google, Amazon, uh, Oracle, all of these companies essentially owning like almost everything. Um, and all of those companies are contractors for military, the military and intelligence. Right. And uh, when you consider something like Palantir, they profile people, they suck up all of your data and then they profile you. Um, and Palantir can profile like whether or not they deem you subversive or not. And what happens when AI, you know, gets access of that and gets put in control of things like humanitarian aid, like they're talking about doing, um, or in charge of, um, you know, the government itself, which is also talked about in the Schmidt Kissinger book. It gets complicated. So, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the coming sort of like social credit paradigm, for example. So what happens if there's a big crisis, uh, your country is like a war zone or the, the economy collapses and you're dependent on humanitarian aid or some sort of aid from the government or uh, some other group and there isn't enough for everyone, right? And so they decide, oh, well, it's fair to put super intelligent AI in charge of it. And then that AI is like, oh, well, this person's been very compliant and hasn't committed all of these thought crimes, but not you, you know, who is it going to decide to give the food rations to and stuff like that. You know, that's the risk of a lot of this stuff when it gets put in charge of too many systems. And then there's another issue of whether AI is actually accurate or not. Um, so, you know, they'll say uh, like with, with facial recognition, I think there was um a report a few years ago in the UK that a lot of the facial recognition stuff that the the Met Police and, and other law enforcement groups are using are it, it insanely inaccurate, uh, but they want to not, they want to continue using it and like deepen its involvement in identifying people, whether it's like at live events and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I mean, it was insanely inaccurate. I mean, I can't remember the exact amount, but it was like under 50% accurate. So like flipping a coin is more accurate in that case. And what happens when AI algorithms that choose who lives and who dies, uh, you know, 
are put in charge of stuff and they're like 70% accurate or less. Because, I mean, the government's really corrupt with contractors. Like, they don't always pick the best contractor for the job. So someone has connections that gets their AI in charge and they oversell they, their AI and say it's 95% accurate. But it's not audited by an independent company, right? And so it's actually, like, in reality, 65% accurate or something. And you're putting it in charge of, like, stuff that has a major effect on people's lives. That kind of stuff is happening. And it's, I mean, I'm talking about stuff that hasn't necessarily quite happened yet, but we're headed there. In this segment, we delve into Whitney Webb's examination of Silicon Valley's significant influence on AI development, sparking ethical concerns regarding privacy, bias, and the potential misuse of AI, especially in sensitive areas like law enforcement and government. The widespread presence of AI is unmistakable across various industries, enhancing healthcare by enabling quicker and more precise diagnoses and transforming transportation through advancements like self-driving vehicles. Recent studies corroborate Webb's concerns, highlighting real-world scenarios where the accuracy and fairness of AI are crucial yet often contested. The discourse surrounding AI's impact on our societal structure is gaining momentum. Let's further explore Whitney's insights into the potential risks and evolutionary path of AI integration. People need to keep in mind that a large amount of alternative media uh, gets money from what I refer to as Thielverse, um, with meaning Peter Thiel, right? Um, but really more broadly, it's the PayPal, PayPal mafia, as it's been called, people affiliated with PayPal to various degrees, which of course includes uh, Elon Musk. They have a lot of influence alter over alternative media and even over uh, content platforms like Rumble. Um, and have been funding, quote unquote, libertarian movements and all of this stuff. But I don't really see them as being libertarian at all. So like taking Peter Thiel as an example, you know, Peter Thiel claims to be uh, a Bitcoin maximalist, right? And then he goes after he says that um, on a panel next to then CIA director Mike Pompeo and says, uh, Bitcoin is a Chinese financial weapon against the US dollar. Right. And then in terms of libertarianism, you know, um, Peter Thiel says he's a libertarian, but instead uh, he created Palantir, which is the most uh, insane surveillance tool that the CIA has today. So you literally handed the worst part of the state the worst tool possible, but you're a libertarian and you're against state overreach. Um, and so similarly, Elon Musk has, you have to look at the actions of Musk and then what he says. And not enough of people uh, do that, whether it's for Musk or really anyone. You have to look at people's actions, not just what they say, because someone can say all the right things and then, you know, be totally f***ing you behind your back. And if you're just going to take what they're telling you and the excuses and whatever, I mean, you'll never figure out what's actually going on. And I think that's fair for Elon Musk as well. Did he buy Twitter to save free speech or did he buy Twitter to have a mass of data uh, to train AI on and to train all other sorts of products he has on? Um, or did he make it like he's openly admitted, did he buy it so he can turn Twitter now X into X the everything app that doesn't just become, uh, you know, a made, you know, isn't just social media. It becomes half of the financial system and becomes American WeChat which of course WeChat in China uh, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. a, the everything I app know. means you have all the data, basically. If people use it for everything, it accumulates more data than everything else and it has all the control. There's a lot of cultural issues with celebrity in the West where people are waiting, have been trained to wait for a political savior who's going to come and save us of all of our problems and no one actually has to do anything and we can just sit back and wait for the right person to run for office and then we all vote for them and then this one person is magically going to save us from all of our problems. A lot of people in alternative media are going to promote certain figures. I mean, maybe they're funded by them, maybe they're not, right? Um, but ultimately, you know, a, a lot of what keeps the current system in power is our trust in it or our, you know, like the financial system in particular right? You know, mm. trust is super fundamental to that, but it doesn't deserve our trust, right? The current system. And so we need to withdraw our consent in, uh, from the system and our trust in these people who have spent decades and decades and decades screwing everyone over. You know, it's time to put our trust in people who actually deserve it. And a lot of times in any one person's life, you know, the people you actually know you can trust are people you know at the local level. And so it, I think, you know, it's time 
to kind of start there. And, you know, that sort of leads into the whole idea of like decentralization also that like the more mm-hmm. power goes back to the local level, the less power the national or state or whatever uh, has, you know. And there needs to be a a power shift towards the public and towards the people. And we can't just wait for the right politician to be put in charge of the state to give that to us, right? We have to do that um, ourselves because as we've historically seen, the state, whether it's capitalist or communist, uh, accumulates more money and power for itself. Whitney Webb carefully examines the contrast between the public personas of tech moguls and their actual influence on media and cryptocurrency. This scrutiny extends to broader ethical considerations surrounding AI including biases, privacy issues, and the crucial matter of accountability when AI systems fail or make unethical decisions. Webb's insights emphasize the importance of grassroots movements and individual accountability in a rapidly advancing technological landscape. As AI becomes increasingly integrated into our daily lives, maintaining a well-informed and balanced perspective on its advantages and drawbacks is essential. This approach is vital to ensure that AI continues to serve the best interests of humanity rather than becoming a hindrance. We hope this episode has shed light on the intricate relationship between technology and societal norms in our AI-driven era. Being informed, engaged, and proactive is key. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.